at dianawest.net. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to be with you, Sam. Well, I think it's awesome that now we know it's our fault. Well, now we, can rest we know easy. it's our fault. Yes, we're back to that. Once again. <laughs> once again. What do you make of the Corker Bill? Oh, treason, damn, damnation, <laughs> skullduggery. No, this, seriously, I actually was stunned. And I, I, I sort of feel silly because I shouldn't be at this point. But I was stunned to see the Republicans in the majority essentially cede their power in the language of this bill, which takes away their majority powers and essentially allows 41 Democrats or 41 votes for the president to pass anything um, relating to this so-called treaty with Iran. So I was actually I was actually flummoxed. I am amazed at how it is being portrayed in many stories as this vibrant Senate reclamation of powers. I mean, the whole thing is, is more... Um, more madness and more uh, gobbledygook. I've I've read parts of it, and it literally says that that Obama does not need Congress's approval. Right, right. So, so you just wonder why? In are what they going way? To yeah. Why Why are they even showing up? And uh, I'm wow. I'm going to put forward a motion to stop paying all governmental uh, congressmen. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's the logic of nope. it. And you see, but no that more pay. Actually, that's scary because that is where we're going. We we are going to this, ex, this. I hate the term executive overreach because it sounds so clinical. But we are going to imperial president. We are going to king world. I mean, this this is what is happening, where the Congress is merely an appendage, uh, you know, a rubber stamp for a a king like president and and. We have news for you. We have the news this morning. All day, every day. They used to hold. I mean, this this is what is. It's very. It's a very much a a kind of Tammany Hall run type place. It's very ugly, and and when it comes to national security, it still is shocking to see how they abdicate and how they fall in with with the elites, with the White House. I mean, essentially, you are looking at just the White House engorging uh, Congress. Um, you see America normalizing the abnormal in Iran, and you see all of these things sort of converging with, meanwhile, we have no border. And now there are reports that ISIS is in Mexico near the border. I mean, all of these things are happening. And who's in charge? President Obama. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing is terrifying. Yeah. Uh, what about Menendez? who is now <laughs> facing all kinds of, uh, you know, and, and basically An as a Democrat, mm -hmm. because he was critical of, uh, of the president's position on Iran. And he right. stuck to his guns, uh, which is more than I can say for a lot of Republicans on the Hill. Right. Right. No, it's true. Well, he's been made an example of. I mean, this is how, you know, people learned at a certain point a long time ago, you really don't need gulags to control a population. You make examples of people, whether it's free speech adherents who, who go on trial in European countries or, or here. I mean, someone's made an example of that people are bounced off their committees by the Republican leadership. Menendez is being, uh, you know, completely besieged. These these seem to be the way you control, crowd control, we can call it. Um, and it's it's... You know, it's 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 so dispiriting. Um, it's it's really it's really it, you know you just kind of shake your head and say what next? Yeah, well, I, I do. I don't, I I say what next because um, I know that there's always hope. So the question is, what do we do? Um, the the first thing I would say is we have to contact our representatives. That people should be dialing yeah. that phone every day. Yeah, they should be. I mean, there's there's that, and there is hope. I think there's only hope and clarity, though. I mean, there was an amazing story this week that I don't think has been covered very much, which was the, the appearance on the Internet of a 1995 uh, a book tour appearance yeah. by then just a author, Barack Obama, yeah. um, at the Cambridge Library, where he actually addresses the fact that Frank Marshall Davis a, a communist organizer of the of the greatest threat. He was actually on an FBI pickup list in the event of a war between the United States and Soviet Union back in the day. We actually describes him as his mentor, as his schooler in white racism and other um, assorted uh, delights. And you know, this is sort of this is the explanation for what we're living through that the media and 
the other politicians. I mean, it's not just the media's fault. If politicians make enough statements about things, the media does have to cover it, or at least there's a record of it. There's been silence on the radical roots, the Marxist-Leninist roots of Barack Obama, of his upbringing. We saw what happened when Rudy Giuliani invoked it not too long ago to try to explain why he didn't feel that Barack Obama you know, had American interests at heart. I mean, this is reality, but it's suppressed reality. And I think that's part of the reason people are so disconnected and, and discombobulated because there is no connection to what really is going on, what, what the facts of the matter are. And I think we can't really get to a place where hope has validity until we really understand all the pieces. And this is just one. You know, but it's again, call, yeah. your, call your local media and say, why aren't you covering this amazing thing that's on the Internet? We can all look at it, put it in the paper and, and explain it. Yeah, that's a good point. But the but the problem is you'll get an ex, you'll get it explained away, right? You're just sure. anti-Marxist. What's your problem, <laughs> Diana? I haven't heard that one lately, but maybe that's next. Maybe that's next. Right. Well, that's it, you know, again, I, I watched normalizing the abnormal. That's right. And I and I tell you, I watched the video, and um, uh, with all due respect, Obama makes a compelling case for his personal experience. But but what's unfortunate about it uh, is that he 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 wallows in the hurt and the um, you know and and we say this that that he he has this racism in his past. The story that he tells on the tape is about basically the day that he realized that his his grandparents who loved him and were raising him were quote racist. And unfortunately, right. he can't see past that to see that they weren't racist because they loved him and they raised him and they gave him all of their time and he and and the country's not racist because he was elected to the highest office in the land and and somehow he can't reconcile those two things with the narrative that he's developed so uh yeah it goes it goes so much deeper than all of that diana west sorry we've run out of time I love chatting with you. Thank you for coming on the show. Go to dianawest.net and uh, check up on all the latest that she's up to. And I will be right